Hey, it's Drybear. The next installment of Monster Hunter is coming next year early, and it's almost here. So let's look at all of the cool new releases they've been showing about Monster Hunter Wilds and go through the weapon previews as well. Because as someone who has been a huge fan of Monster Hunter for a long time, I know that a lot of people got onboarded with the series with Monster Hunter World. However, with Monster Hunter Rise, the game was quite different. It was almost like this nice, I like to refer to Rise as the vacation for Capcom for Monster Hunter, as they they went with a whole bunch of arcade style mechanics and art style and changes, but Wilds kind of gets back to what made World so popular with so many people. The more realistic open area environments with more straightforward combat that's a little less arcade style. And boy does Wilds look amazing. We're going to see a whole bunch of new monsters returning old monsters and some awesome graphics to boot and some brand new mechanics like being able to mount on, join a mount kind of like we did in Rise. So you're able to mount up and do some things like grabbing items while mounted, being able to move around on mount, and it will open up some nice inventory options for you, as well as some gameplay options that we had in Rise, but not quite as excessive as Rise was. So it's almost like they took a lot of the old Monster Hunter games and gameplay styles, a lot of what made World work, and a lot of the great successes that came out of Rise as well, to put together into this new mainline story game for Monster Hunter, Monster Hunter Wilds, and it looks absolutely incredible they just finished a full launch series going over all of the weapons that we've known about in monster hunter the previews for them some new abilities some new previews that didn't exist before animations i've never seen before on these weapons which makes it very exciting and different the first thing we're talking about is the brand new focus mode for the monster hunter wilds experience so we're not going to get like clutch claw or crazy wire bugs going around but we have this new focus mode which i think solves a problem that a lot of people have had with Monster Hunter experiences throughout the years and that has been depending on your weapon difficulty hitting specific spots on monsters I know people that run sword and shield that have lower reach have trouble hitting things that are up in the air if you are playing lance or gun lance you don't have any problem being able to swing wide or poke up into the air depending on the size of the monster or if you're using a ranged weapon it's not too bad but some of the melee weapons have a tough time hitting specific spots so the unique mechanic for wilds is the ability to activate a a focus mode which will allow you to while locked onto the monster aim your reticle at specific spots on the monster to hit a weak point with more precision it also unlocks a special animation for the weapons called a focus strike which will allow you to do a special animation for that weapon that no other weapon can do and also aim it at a specific spot as well which i think some of these can even mount or do really cool things so it adds a little bit more flavor for the weapons themselves and also fills in some gaps that some weapons may have in trying to hit weak points because as you know if you're a big fan of the monster hunter series you know that it's all about being able to break off parts to weaken the monster or being able to damage parts in order to open up other opportunities and some weapons do struggle with that specific mechanic in general and the addition of these new mechanics with focus mode the mount and even some new opportunities for your play style in wilds it opens up some really kind of quality of life experiences I would say for the game in general so we talked about how you can be on your mount and move around this is not only going to be a cool addition for wilds but I would argue is something that's necessary because something that they haven't talked about enough is the sheer size of the regions and zones that wilds is going to boast there is a crazy increase in the region size and map size for this game and so in some cases you really will need to be able to get on your mount and travel around while doing this on top of that they're also going to be adding some really unique unique mount mechanics which didn't even exist in rise even though you could mount your dog in this case you will have the opportunity to grab items from far away using your grapple you can also be able to use your mount to get in and out of combat and reposition which is super nice and the process of getting on your mount and getting off your mount is really smooth and clean which i think will make the massive environments and the new mechanics for fighting a lot more interesting in wilds so you can also sharpen your weapon this is one of the biggest changes for rise the fact that you could get on your dog and sharpen your weapon while running around meant that you had a lot more opportunities to be able to do that you could also bring along extra gear things that you can have with you and move those along with you and it helps you with farming as well we also will have the slinger staying in from world which is nice it'll allow you to pick up special ammo types and also launch special pods that will be able to disrupt and deal damage to enemies it'll allow you to knock down uh targets like things that are hanging down to hit a monster using your environment 
movement to your advantage, which is a big part of Monster Hunter. It allows you to put in special like ammo types that might break, uh, do special part breaks to different parts of monsters, blind monsters, knock monsters out of the air and cause them to fall down to the ground, things like that. You'll need, depending on the monster you're fighting, to use your environment and your resources as well. And that's one of my favorites right there, the ability to grab items from a distance using your slinger. And by the way, you can also do that while you're on your mount. So being able to use these things with a slinger and the mount and re-equip and sharpen while you're on your mount, all of this is just super, super cool. It makes it very nice quality of life and also adds to the immersion of the world. Now let's walk through the weapons. There are 14 in mainline Monster Hunter, and I'm hoping there's going to be potentially even a new one that they include, but they have included uh, all 14 of the weapons with previews showing. So let's start with the dual blades. This is high octane, high speed if you want to be Levi Ackerman and spin down the backside of a monster, or if you want to deal some extra damage just by getting in their face. Short attack range like the sword and shield and generally has a high damage output. They had a really cool grapple and rise and in, in world, they also had some really nice burst damage using their demon mode that you can go in. So if you like flash, you like style, you like extra value from being able to just move between moves, get some damage, that little flip there is kind of new, which is really cool. And one thing you'll learn about dual blades when you play them more and more is that they have a ton of transitionary options. So at first, dual blades are actually one of the more simple weapons to play. You can just spam a bunch and do okay but advanced dual blade users will tell you that it's all about managing your demon mode but also being able to know where you are in your attack animations and be able to transition between different attacks to get the most amount of damage possible and also setting up your cool flashy cinematic attacks next up is one of my personal favorites the lance i feel like the lance never really gets the uh, attention that it deserves just because it's usually a very simple weapon and people don't like being limited in their movement but i think advanced lance play is so incredibly fun you're not only are you able to stand in front of any kind of monster and trade blows with them like a boxing match but you also have a lot of really cool options at its simplest it is a very easy weapon to pick up generally you play with a three hit combo a front hit three hit combo or an upward three hit combo but it looks like there are some new options here you can see that, that there's a counter on it as well a nice little parry and of course there's a really cool uh dash attack that works really well i was hoping they would get like the slide slam that we got from rise but it was a little bit too much for the the lance i think there are some really cool plays to play around with and as you get better at the lance you do actually speed up quite substantially like being able to do guard evade to jump and hop further away using your charge mechanic to catch up or keep up with monsters. I think Lance at first feels very simple and very slow, but as you master the weapon, it feels better and better and better. And it's one of the few weapons that can go toe to toe with monsters without having to dodge constantly or run away because they can just slap fight in front of them, which is really cool. They also have some really cool options for hitting specific weak points. Both the gun Lance and the Lance can target things very easily because they have a range of attacks that go upward at a 45 degree angle or straight ahead or side sweeping. So hitting things becomes very easy for a long weapon like the lance and generally it's something i would recommend for a lot of people just get used to it as you put time into it it gets better and better next up is the bow and it's a weapon that i bounce between quite often i don't really like playing the bow all the time but when i do and i get the feeling for bow i really really enjoy it it has changed a lot between monster hunters sometimes it's more aggressive sometimes it's more defensive sometimes it has more mobility sometimes it's more focused on stamina consumption it looks like we're gonna have more of a balanced approach for wilds as you see the bow play here one of the best parts about the bow is you can play very close together you'll see some shotgun shots in this preview here so allows you to really get close up on weak points and do spread ammo to do burst damage to weak points you can also play from further away and there's a good amount of mobility that comes along with the bow as well and generally you'll see this with people that like to play high mobility high stamina usage constantly moving around and fighting the monster and they're also pretty good at dealing damage to weak points though one of the weaknesses of the bow is being able to sever and looks like we have some new abilities going along with the bow in wilds as well their new focus skill allows them to put a target marker on the enemy and then when they fire for a short period of time their ammo will curve like wanted and hit that target which allows them to hit a specific spot with accuracy and then deal damage to it repeatedly which is also very nice for bow users on console with auto aim and weak points being kind of 
of weird. And they also have this Dragon's Dogma Magic Archer Mega Slot where it can lock onto a whole bunch of weak points at once and do some damage there. So it looks like in Wilds they're trying to expand the playstyle of the bow to not just be like get to power charge four, slide shoot, slide shoot, slide shoot, slide shoot until you run out of stamina because usually the meta there. And of course, with the weak points here, it means that Bo has a lot more options for playstyle that might be pretty cool going into wilds. Next up is the Switch Axe, a real powerhouse in the Monster Hunter Wilds selection. It goes between two weapons. It switches between them. So it switches between an axe, which is your slower, lower DPS version of the weapon that builds up meter. And then you have the sword form, which you can switch into sword and it usually requires meter to have or charge up to have and you'll use that it's a, you move a little bit less but you do a ton more damage with that it allows you to discharge whatever charge you have on that weapon it's one of the more cinematic weapons in monster hunter because you can shove the sword into them and build up that blast and explode like that which looks really cool they do have a little bit less defense than they had in rise in rise they had a whole bunch of counters that were pretty crazy but it is a very flexible very fun weapon that it can do a mix of like stagger damage and axe form with wild swings going back and forth huge burn in sword form with very cinematic mounts and things like that and the focus system opens up a lot of really cool opportunities to make sure your big elemental discharge for that works awesomely and has a really strong effect on the monster you're facing next up is the sns the sword and shield and one of my all-time favorite weapons this is the one that i think a lot of people when they get into the game it's recommended as a beginner weapon and usually is the simplest weapon but any monster hunter veteran will tell you that over time this is one of the most skill expressive weapons in the game you have a a lot of movement ways to move back and forth and you can treat your sword and your shield as two different weapons entirely there are always combos that use the shield primarily and just like the hammer if you hit the target in the head you can cause ko damage which causes them to fall down or get knocked out you can also mount easier you can do some really cool flashy animations there's the back hop the famous back hop where you go back forward into a perfect rush combo with time tits super fun and one of my favorite aspects about the sword and shield which makes it unique among weapons in monster hunter is the fact that you can actually use items while your weapon is out every other weapon in the game you have to sheathe your weapon to drink a potion use some consumable do something in the environment however with a sword and shield because it's such a light weapon and it's the starting weapon for most hunters in the lore it ends up being a weapon that you can use items with with the weapon out which is pretty unique and fun next up is the lbg or the light bow gun there are two bow guns in the game and this is the lighter version of it lbg goes through some evolutions depending on the monster hunter you're talking about ends up being either more of an ammo focused gun or it ends up being a very fast gun like it was in rise with parries and counters and slides but it gives you a lot more mobility than the heavy bow gun and generally relies a lot on ammo types typically you'll see light bow gun builds specify like elemental weakness versus the target you're going against or plays off of pierce where you can go but if you like using resources and strategy a lot light bow gun is a great choice because it all comes down to what ammo you bring to the fight and how you use your stakes in the ground to be able to do massive damage to the right spot on the monster in general it is a pretty simple weapon a pretty straightforward weapon you'll just be shooting at the monster but in practice at the optimal level trying to speed clear monsters and get as good as you can it is all about not only farming the materials to make your ammo but also to bring the correct ammo types for the fight you're going against and based on the size of the monster too maybe you want spread ammo maybe you want stickies for ko maybe you want pierce if it's a, a monster that is very long you can shoot long length wise on them get a lot of damage that way and you can also set up some really cool interactions by putting your stakes in the ground which are these mines that trigger when they get close and you can trigger them multiple times by shooting them again and again so again based on your positioning your planning your strategy you can do some really cool combos with the light boga next up is the hammer and this weapon is one of the most interesting weapons to use because it has build up states so you can charge while moving the higher you go the stronger it gets it also has the highest ko stat of most weapons in the game though it seems like the new hunting horn is going to have some pretty good ko as well and it's all about the bonk so you have what's called the big bang which is this big overhand slam you can hit them on the target and you can ko monsters so often with this it is so incredibly fun there's also a uh, hopefully we kept the aerial um bay blades 
spin from other monster hunters that will stick with that. I haven't seen the golf swing either, but it looks like we have some new moves for the hammer that might mix things up. Not only can you charge up, but you can also do this crazy swing to add charges very quickly. And it's also one of those weapons that's pretty simple at first, but it all comes down to positioning, being able to charge up, reach your charge state at, at the best possible time, and also landing your big bang and your big swings on the monster right at the right moment into the right spot to knock them out so your team can wail on them. It's also one of the better weapons to use in group because everyone's going to love you if you knock the target out, put them on the ground so they can just go to town on them as often as they want. Next is the charge blade, which a lot of people will tell you is probably one of the more complicated and challenging weapons to use in Monster Hunter. And this is because you have multiple parts to it. You have your sword, you have your shield, and then you have your axe form and you have to charge this blade. So you charge up files, which is a unique resource for it. You fill those files up and you inject them into your weapons and you can combine them together to have a shield charge, a sword charge, and a full axe charge. But again, just like the switch axe, you have the ability to discharge this build up onto the enemy. You can also do a, uh, a spin saw, uh, like saw blade build, which is really cool and generally has some really cool elemental effects. And of course it has the super amped elemental discharge, the Syed, which allows you to dunk on the enemy and have a big explosion of element. But the hardest part about charge blade is learning to transition between its states, between sword and board, to charging the shield, to bringing out the ax, to filling up the ax, to getting back to sword and board and using that. And generally there's a little bit of a learning curve in getting started, but a lot of charge blade users will tell you that once you master the movement, it is a very rewarding weapon and is super simple to use. It's just all in learning the early steps and getting into it that matters most. And a unique aspect about the charge blade that I think is super fun is the idea of what's called guard points. Because you have a shield and you're transforming your weapons constantly, there is what's called a guard point with the charge blade, and that is at specific points in the animation of your attacks and transitions, you will have a guard effect, which means that you can transition your sword into an axe, and if you time it so the enemy hits you right as your sword or your shield is facing forward, it counts as a guard. So you can actually do your animation process of going between your weapon states and still protect yourself with enough skill and has a very high skill ceiling and a lot of skill expression as you master the weapon. Super fun, very cool. Next up is one of the long-standing, most popular weapons in the Monster Hunter series, and that is the long sword. But you can think of it as a great katana in many ways. It is a much lighter sword than the great sword, uh, or the switch axe for that matter, and generally has some really fluid movements that go along with it. You have ways to counter and parry. You can go to a sheath stance like that and then pull out to unsheath to do bonus damage. You can build up meter for your weapon and expend that meter with really crazy flashy attacks. And overall is a very flexible weapon with good reach, excellent damage, and a lot of flexibility. That's what makes it one of the more popular weapons. And it's also incredibly flashy too. People just love going up into the air and slicing down with the long sword, being able to strike any part of the monster they want. And I'm sure when it comes to the focus mode and focus strikes, it's going to be even more precise than it's been in the past. So if you like having kind of options in every direction, very flashy attacks, and also a lot of options for parrying and countering and guarding, then Longsword is a great choice for you. Hunting Horn has always been one of the most criminally undervalued weapons in the series of Monster Hunter, and it changes a lot between Monster Hunters, depending on what songs you have available, what buffs you have. So essentially, the Hunting Horn is a gigantic hammer that is also also a musical instrument and depending on what monster hunter we're talking here you have different buffs that you can apply different ways you can deal damage to the target or different things you can do in a party and based on the preview that we see here we have some nice area of effect uh, effects that can deal damage to the target some really new offensive animations as well it looks like hunting horn is probably one of the most changed weapons going into wilds but not only can you do great stuff in solo play but you can also buff your allies and create opportunities and it is technically a hammer which means it does have good KO damage you can do just like you can with a hammer knock out the target put them on the ground and do extra stuff like that which makes it a really flexible weapon that's super fun and very unique next up is a weapon that I fall into and out of favor with every new title I don't know why gun lance is so unique and plays 
differently than most weapons. At its base, with its core movement, it functions very similarly to the lance. You have hops in multiple directions, strong guards and counters, and you also have, you know, upward attacks and forward attacks that allow it to be very lance-like. But that's where the similarities stop because you are using a gun. It has cartridges, it has ammo, you can release these cartridges into the target, and you also have different ways of shelling as well. There's long shelling, normal shelling, you have full burst, big worm stake blasts that blow the enemy away, and depending on the gun lance you're using, you have a different shelling type, and you also have this blender attack, which, my goodness, we've got so many options for the gun lance going into wilds, which is super cool. So if you like having the defensive options and range of lance, but you want something a little more complicated, then gun lance is a great choice. It usually has excellent damage options, and it usually takes kind of a skilled hand to bring out the best potential of it, because it is a gun, you have to use your charges and cartridges and reload them at key times during the fight. So there's a reload right there, but it looks like we have some new options for post reload or using the weapon. And you also have to decide what kind of gun lance you're gonna run, what kind of shelling options you're gonna use and how that weapon comes together. It looks like we're not gonna have the Gundam jump, the blast jump that we had in Rise, which is a huge shame. I love that addition quite a lot, but it's nice to see that we have some new options for post reload and maybe even using the bonuses that you have on the weapon a wide variety of options high burst damage and very technical as well up next is the weapon that i probably have the most cumulative hours on in general and that is going to be the ig or the insect glaive this is a glaive it is kind of like a polearm or bow staff in many cases however it comes with a special mechanic the kinsect which is that giant beetle butterfly insect that comes on your arm and it's part of the combat that you use you will be able Able to gain buffs using the kinsect so you see in the top left corner there's three different buffs there depending on what part of the monster you hit you get a different color and when you get all three buffs equipped you actually end up having a full new move set that activates so it's all about using your space using your mobility using your kinsect to do some cool new things as well and we got this blender attack which is just ridiculous the insect glaive is usually the aerial type uh, weapon you can dash around in the air make yourself go airborne and they're also usually the best at mounting the monster until the clutch claw came active in iceborne and probably still will be in wilds and they have some cool new attacks that go along with the kinsect kind of like the gun lance some of the other weapons you will be able to equip different kinds of kinsects that have different buffs different attributes different effects which all makes it a very unique weapon to use and again if you like being up in the air or doing some really aerial combinations on enemies it's super nice they also have hurricane slash a very straightforward and easy to use ability that can get almost any part of the monster and if there's a weak point up in the air you can just go in the air and fight the monster in the air rather than having to wait on the ground for them to come down and meet you. Next up is the heavy bow gun which has been one of the highest DPS options in the entire game for a long time. It is a very straightforward weapon. You can usually put attachments on the front of it that allow you to specify whether you want to be more mobile or more defensive and not as ammo reliant as you would be with the light bow gun where you have to have the right ammo for the right situation, but you do still have options for specific opportunities and situations depending on the monster you're fighting. Heavy burst damage, usually some prone modes or some build-up modes for massive blasts. Their focus strike also seems like it's a very quick but explosive blast. I think it's that right there, which have crazy damage opportunity. It's a little bit slower, but if you like, if you like being able to use a weapon and you want to do massive burst on it, machine gun, heavy blast, huge shelling, and big big cartridges, then I think that the heavy bow gun is a perfect fit. And being able to use it against some of the monsters that are a little bit more aggressive there's some skill and some planning that goes into doing that because sometimes the monsters won't stand still and let you shoot them lastly is the giga chad weapon the great sword this is a huge chunk of metal and has very slow wind up animations but it's one of the more satisfying weapons in the game because if you can line up these massive animations it has some of the highest single hit burst damage out of anything in the game as far as a, a massive big blow goes and if you can time it with the enemy and line up your animations so you strike them when they strike it is super satisfying, very bursty and very cinematic as well. It has charge state and it looks like they're keeping the shoulder tackle as well from previous titles. So you'll be able to use that. The focus strike allows you to move along the side and do some really cool things there. But it's a weapon that is very straightforward and very simple, but it depends on being able to start charging up your attacks at just the right time so that when it lands on you and strikes, you're able to hit them in the right spot for crazy burst damage and has some decent defensive options as well. So there you go.
you go. There's the recap of the new mechanics coming in Wild, some of the highlights and announcements we've had, and going through all of the new weapon previews for the new game as well. I hope you're as excited about this game as I am. I am so hyped for a new monster to come online, and also very glad that we're moving on from the previous era and coming back to our roots with this game. Super fun. If you're not a Monster Hunter fan, it's now a great time to start getting into it because we're pretty close. You know, early 2025, we're, it's coming soon for Monster Hunter Wilds. If you found value in today's video, leave a like down below. Leave a comment for the algorithm to help this video get seen by more people. And don't forget to check out my other channels for other content and other stuff and other things.